I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna make something to organize my kids' school supplies. Here's what we're trying to fix today. I've got four kids, three in school, so there's a lot of homework, a lot of drawing and crafting and stuff that happens here. And unfortunately, all the supplies that they use for that, the pencils and crayons and paper and scissors and all that stuff, ends up in a pile right here on these shelves. It makes a huge mess, it's ugly to look at, and it's hard for them to find what they want. So, we're gonna organize it. I'm trying something a little bit different on this project, and it's really just to save time and weight. Instead of using plywood for most of the structure, I'm gonna use this pine panel. This is made up of one by fours glued together into a panel, and I bought it like this at the home center. It's probably cheaper if you were to buy the one by fours and make the panel yourself, but I'm trying to save time, and these were ready to go. I started with a couple of strips of these panels to use for the side panels of my box. I used a miter saw just to cut them down to the right length. Then I switched out my blade and my table saw for my dado stack, and anytime you use a dado stack, you want to do some test cuts on some scrap wood to make sure that the fit is okay. The first time I didn't get it right and I had to add some shims until I got the perfect fit. Then I ran both of these pieces over the blade to get dados on both ends and right down the middle. Then I cut down some more pine panels for the top, the bottom, and the center shelf. I ripped these panels down to the correct depth, and then used my crosscut sled to cut them to the right size. I measured the gap in between the dados that I'd cut and cut a couple of more strips to fit in between those. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. I sanded down all the cut edges before I started gluing things together. Then I found the center point on all three of my panels and from that center point I measured in each direction 3 eighths of an inch so that my 3 quarter inch material would be centered right in the middle of the panel. With all those marked I knew where to glue in my dividers. I added some glue, lined it up with the marks that I had made, and then added some clamps to hold it in place. I drove in some brads from the backside to hold it there so I could remove the clamps and keep working. I did the same thing for the second shelf, and then these were ready to go. I added some glue inside all the dados on the end caps and on all the pieces that were going to touch, and then I just started snapping all the pieces into place, and it went together very quickly. You'll notice on the back side that I actually cut these pieces shorter so that I could put a back panel across them all. Then I clamped everything up so the glue could dry. I only like halfway thought this through when I was making these panels shorter so that I could put a back panel on here. I didn't cut out this area. It's not a big deal though because I'm going to use a flush cut saw and just trim this off in both directions. That way I can put a panel down on the back. These saws are really handy to get a nice close cut and I buy the cheap ones from Harbor Freight so they're just 3 or $4. The panel fit right in and then I used some brads just to hold it in place. There was really no need to glue it on. I want to point out really quick that if you stopped right here, this would actually be a really simple but useful inbox, outbox kind of thing for school papers. We have a lot of forms for field trips and homework and things like that, and this would be a good way for kids to be able to put them in a place that you could check them off before they go back to school. These are sized just for a piece of paper to fit in, but if you need a folder to go in there, you can just stretch the whole thing this way a little bit in both directions, and you should be good to go. All right, let's finish this up. Okay, as I often do, I'm changing my plan in the middle of the project. Originally, I was gonna have two crates that sat on the top of this, and they were both just kind of rectangular crates. One would be full of these containers that I got at the dollar store, and the other would be just a big dump bin for crayons. But now that I got here, I think that would just look like a giant rectangle, and I want it to be a little bit more interesting. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna put a trim piece of some sort around the entire perimeter up top, kind of like this piece, and let these canisters sit on the side. Then I'll make a bin that will drop down in the center to hold all of those crayons. I'm telling you this because if I had planned this change at the very beginning, I would have cut these side panels differently. Instead of having this panel plus trim, I would have just made it all one piece and cut these dados in accordingly. So if you're going to make something like this, just think all the way through it, get your design completely done, and then cut your pieces. I cut several one inch strips of the pine to use for this trim around the top. Then I cut 45 degree miters on these using the miter saw. That's really important when you're doing something like this to make sure that your saw is at 45 degrees. It's worth taking the time to get it right. If you don't, you'll have gaps in your corners. Mine are pretty close, but not quite perfect, but I added glue to all the surfaces that were going to touch and then put everything in place. I used some clamps to hold these down, and I probably didn't need the corner clamps, but I just like using them, so I added them as well. They're just a couple of dollars a piece, but they are super helpful. To make the crayon box, I cut four pieces of pine using the same miter setup on my miter saw. Then I ran all the pieces over the lowered table saw blade to add a dado. I moved the fence over just a little bit and then ran them over again to make sure the dado was thick enough to use this 1 8 inch plywood. I added some glue to all the surfaces that were going to touch and then used blue painter's tape to line up the outer edges before wrapping the whole thing around my piece of plywood. The tape is probably enough clamp here, but again, I like using the corner clamps, so I used them here as well. 
With everything dry, I tried out the tray in the top section, and it worked pretty well, but it was a little bit tight, so I used a sander just to smooth down the outer edges and round over all the corners. I found that that caused a little bit of a gapping in some of my corners where I'd made miters, so I just filled those with some wood putty. After that dried, I sanded it off. This will be used by kids, so I smoothed off every corner and every edge that I could with a sanding block, and then put a few coats of polycrylic on this. It's a really easy clear finish to use, it's water based, it's easy to put on, and dries pretty quickly. I could just imagine how gross the inside of the crayon box would end up looking with all those crayons rolling around, so I decided to paint it, and to do that I masked off the outer edge with some blue painter's tape. Then I spray painted it, and it turned out to be the same color as the tape, which was kind of weird. But after that dried, I pulled off the tape, and it was pretty much done. I added some polycrylic to that container as well, just to protect it. Then I just had to clean up all the old stuff, move the supplies that we wanted to keep into the new container, and get it all ready for the kids after school. There it is, it looks way better than it did before. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now obviously this is not all of their craft supplies. There's a bunch of other things that didn't fit on here. This is the stuff that they use on a regular basis to do homework and just to draw. All the other things are just gonna go in a big plastic container that we can put in the closet. They can get it out when they need it and put it away when they're done. I hope this is useful for something that you might need in your house, and I hope you like this project. I'd love to know what you think about it down in the comments below. I've got lots of other videos that you might be interested in, all sorts of different projects. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new video, but just in case, they come out every Thursday morning. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.